I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa! I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa! And don't it feel good? slightly foggy. This is a minor inconvenience. Oh, if only physics could offer me something for this situation. When liquid water gets enough energy, it turns to a gas called water vapor. When it loses enough energy, it turns back to liquid water, or uh, condenses. We can think of air as only being able to hold a certain amount of water vapor, and that amount depends on the temperature of the air. When the shower is running, hot water warms the air inside. The warmer air is then able to hold a great deal of water vapor. As that air spreads to the rest of the bathroom, it starts to cool. This decreases its capacity to hold water vapor. In fact, this capacity can actually drop below the level of water vapor that's in the air at that moment. We would say here that the air is super saturated with water vapor. We find that water vapor molecules don't condense if it's just them and the air molecules. They'll only condense when they come into contact with some liquid or solid particles. Spots like this that promote water vapor to condense are called nucleation points. In the atmosphere, small solid and liquid particles can serve this role, leading water vapor to condense, which allows rain to form. There have even been experiments done where small particles like this are placed deliberately in the air to try to trigger rainfall. The bathroom, the mirror, and other solid objects maintain their cooler temperature even as the air warms up, so they're much cooler than that more moist air. When that air comes in contact with these cooler solid objects, they serve as nucleation points, and that water vapor condenses onto those surfaces. This is actually happening all over your bathroom. You just notice more with the mirror because it's normally so reflective. So, how do we prevent that condensation? Well, we either need to make the mirror too warm for the water to condense or get rid of nucleation points. So here I'm using a hair dryer to warm up just the middle spot on the mirror. Uh, and then I turn on the shower and the sinks, full blast on hot water, and let, let everything fog up. I uh, give it a little time, and uh, we'll see you know, how it turns out here. Uh, ends up working pretty well to keep that one spot clear. Now, it's maybe not super efficient to do this to your whole mirror, though. One pretty effective way to get rid of nucleation points on your mirror is just to keep it clean. All the little dust and debris on there. And gathers water and helps condensation. So, let's clean it. I went ahead and cleaned just the middle part of the mirror and left the two sides uh, pretty dirty. So, let's try running the shower and see how well that worked. Except I forgot to record this section. So, just take my word for it that uh, it wasn't all that impressive and other solutions needed to be sought out. And wouldn't you know it, this time I forgot to turn on the microphone. This video is brought to you by Professionalism. Here I just explained that I blocked off nine little squares on my mirror and treated each one with a different product that I'd seen recommended in a life hack of some sort. Um, for ways that you could keep your mirror from fogging up. So I have this uh, shave gel stuff. Um, I have a uh, bar of soap. 
um, and then I have some turtle wax like you would put on your car. Um, and then there are also squares where we didn't uh, put anything on the square, we just kind of rubbed it with a, uh, the same kind of cloth that we were using to apply the other ones, just uh, to function as a control. And here are the results that I got when I gave surveys. Uh, the top picture on each slide is going to be the, the one that I took right after I applied the compound and then fogged up the mirror. And then to the right of that is the graph of the survey responses that I got. Uh, and then down below is the same thing, but a week later. Um, for the top survey, I had my students do that, so it's like 130 responses. The bottom one, I just harassed some Facebook friends, so it's like 13 responses, I think. Uh, the ones on the left side, those are the, uh, the, the number ones on the left side of the graph. That means uh, very clear and uh, all the way up to five where it's very foggy on these. So a lot of consistency between the two groups and between the two times when the photos were taken. Here I've graphed the averages for each square. Uh, low numbers represented clear, so we can see that C1, B2, C2, and C3 are all in the same neighborhood here. And here are the averages for the one week after application. C1, B2, and C2 are still in the lead. Uh, C3 didn't do as well after one week. And it's finally time to answer the big question, what treatment worked the best? So I've got all the averages compiled into this table and I did add that information about what treatment was used on each square. So let's organize this a bit. So first we've got this organized with, uh, in order of how they performed in that immediately after category. Uh, remember low numbers are good here, so we've got shaving gel as our best performer, but right behind that is our control, one of the controls, and bar soap, and another shaving gel, and then we have a bit of a gap. And now it's organized based on the performance after a week. This time we see the bar soap, one of the bar soap ones, actually did uh, slightly better than either the shaving gels. They still did pretty well. Then we had a couple controls afterward and not great performances after. Uh, let's take a look at the averages for each treatment now. Now this is probably the most reliable way to interpret this. I've noticed in the past that certain parts of the mirror will fog up more than others even without different treatments on them. So we were careful to randomize where these different treatments were going to be applied, which squares got which treatment. So we didn't like do all of one type um, you know, on the column that's furthest away from the shower. Uh, when we look at the averages for each treatment, we see that shaving gel outperforms everything else on this, followed by bar soap, though it only does a little bit better than a control. Uh, turtle wax actually seemed to make things worse on this, which I was surprised. I, I thought the wax would do a nice job of uh, making a hydrophobic coating on the, the surface, and it seems that that didn't help. That it even hurt on this. As for why the shaving gel does so well, uh, I have no idea. My chemistry on this is, um, is not helping me out. So I'd love to see your thoughts in the comments uh, down below. Please, please add to that conversation. Well, now that that's figured out, finally shave. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. If you did, please do share this. Maybe other people learned something too. And try and make more of these videos. I like it. I like sharing what I know. Kind of fun to make silly videos too. So please hit that uh, subscribe button too. With the grain or against the grain never decide. Hmm. If only physics could help me decide. Next time. <laughs>